Hi everybody, welcome to ingvid.com. I'm Adam. In today's video, we're going to look at some phrasal verbs, but these are very specific to, a, to one context, okay? We're going to look at phrasal verbs that you will hear or use in school or in some sort of educational context, okay? So again, just a quick review. What is a phrasal verb? It's a verb in connection with a preposition that has a different meaning than the two words themselves, okay? And you're going to see examples as we go. So we're going to start with hand in or hand out. So at the beginning of a class, a teacher may hand out uh, an assignment, a, like a little exercise. She will hand it out to everyone, and then everyone will work on it. And at the, at the end, when they're finished, all the students will hand in their exercise. So hand out means pass to everyone. Hand in means give back to the teacher or put it all in one place. Tur turn in basically means the same thing as hand in. When you're finished your assignment or when you're the due date of an essay, for example, you'll come to class and you'll turn it in to the teacher. You'll give it to her, submit it to her or him, etc. Keep in mind, hand out, one word, is a noun. And the, the actual piece of paper that the teacher hands out is called a handout. So the teacher hands out a handout. So it's a little bit confusing. Make sure that you hear the different handout, handout. So this is the stress here, hand out. And hand out is even. Two separate words, each stressed individually. Whereas here you have it on the first syllable, hand, okay? Now, turn over. Very straightforward. Actually, it, this one actually does mean exactly what it sounds like. When you come into a class and it's test day, and all the tests are on the desks, and they're upside down, so you can't actually see the first question, the teacher makes everybody sit down and they say, don't turn it over until the time begins. So turn over. Basically flip. Make it right side up. So the teacher will say, okay, everybody ready? They say yes, and she goes, okay, time starts. Turn over your papers and you may begin. So just flip. Drop out. If you go to school and it's too difficult for you or it's going too fast and you can't keep up, you might consider dropping out. So to drop out basically means to quit. But it's when you drop out, it's you're dropping out of a school situation or a program. So some sort of uh, educational setting you're going to drop out of. You're going to quit. A dropout, again, I'm taking the two words together and I'm making a noun. A dropout is a person who dropped out of school or out of a program or a class, etc. Sign up basically means register. So if there's like a school club, let's say there's a chess club and you want to join the chess club, then you need to sign up for the club. Often we use it with the second preposition for, to say what you're signing up for, the target, but you can also use it by itself. Whoever wants to join the chess club should sign up no later than today. So you can use by itself or with the actual target. So join, register for. Show up. Show up and turn up basically mean the same thing. It means to appear, to come to class. So if you don't show up to tomorrow's lesson, you will miss a lot of valuable information. If you don't turn up to tomorrow's class, you will miss a lot of valuable information and maybe you won't do so well on your test. So basically, appear. Don't be absent. Make up, okay? If you missed a class or if you missed a test, you will have to make it up the following week. So basically, you will have to somehow complete this task or complete this test. You will have to do it a different time. You'll make it up. So do it a different time or do again. Some, pe some teachers are very nice. They let their students make up a bad test result. So if you failed your test, your teacher will let you make it up uh, next week or with another assignment. Okay. Next, catch on or catch up. Some people just have a very hard time catching on to what the teacher is saying. So to catch on means basically to understand to grasp the lesson or the situation. Catch up means that maybe you missed a few classes and you, you missed a lot of information. So 
All the students are here in terms of the progress of the class and you're back here because you missed it. So you need to catch up. You need to get all this material before the next class. So when you join the, your classmates, everybody is on the same page. Everybody understands the same things. So catch on, understand, catch up, uh, do the things you missed basically. So you're in the same line with everybody. Pick up is very similar to catch on. If you pick up something quickly, it means you understand it quickly. If you catch on quickly, you understood it quickly. So very similar to catch on. Now, read up on. Read up on basically means do some research. If you, have a, if you found a topic that's very interesting to you, but you don't know very much about it, your teacher might tell you to read up on that topic. Okay, so we usually use it with on, so the two prepositions. You can also say study up on. Read up on means read articles, read books about this topic. Study up on means find out about this topic. Generally, how you're going to find out about the topic is by reading things. So generally, these two things mean the same. Read up on, study up on. Go through. So the teacher is going to give you a whole bunch of materials, like maybe articles or uh, newspaper uh, clippings or whatever materials. And he or she will tell you to go through all the information and get the information you need for the assignment or for the test. So go through and look over essentially means the same thing. Here's a whole bunch of article. Here are, is a bunch of articles. Go through them, find the information you need or look over them, find the information you need and complete your assignment or prepare for the test. Okay, so essentially the same idea. And speak up, very, very important. If a teacher tells you to speak up, there's actually two meanings. One, she or he can't hear you. Speak up, I can't hear you. It means speak louder. The other meaning is be confident. If you have something to say, say it. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid to say it. Speak up. Say what you have to say, and then we'll discuss it and figure out from there. If a teacher tells you to speak up, speak up. Basically, mean if a teacher tells you to speak louder, speak louder. If a teacher tells you to speak up and just say what's on your mind, don't be afraid, say it, and then deal with the consequences after that. Okay? So, these are very useful. If you're in a school situation, if you're in an educational situation or context, you really need to know all these phrasal verbs. Keep in mind, all of these have other meanings in other contexts. So, make sure you understand and you don't confuse the contexts when using uh, phrasal verbs, okay? Now, if you wanna make sure you understood these and you wanna review and have a little practice, go to ingvid.com and take the quiz that's there right now. You can also ask me questions in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, that's it. If you like the video, give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And come back next time for more vocab and uh, grammar and other interesting lessons to help you learn English. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.